talk with you again because a vision softly creeping left it seems while I was sleeping and the vision that was planted in my brain still Silence. 2018 was a historic year. On the 25th of June, the fight for Armenian genocide recognition in the Australian Federal Parliament was taken from the advocacy arena to the legislative coliseum. This motion focused on recognising the Armenian genocide through the prism of Australia's first major international humanitarian relief effort that focused on aiding the survivors of the Armenian genocide. This motion was introduced into the House of Representatives. After many years of advocating for the Armenian genocide to be recognised by Australia's government, we realised that something needed to change in our narrative, but also in the will of the parliamentarians sitting across the other side of those conversations. A turning point happened in Benelong when uh, John Alexander was forced into a by-election for his own seat. During that time, Australia's focus was on the immersed Armenian populated federal seat in Australia. We managed to use that to our advantage by receiving a pledge that the Armenian Genocide Motion, recognising this unique part of Australia's history would be allowed to be debated in the House of Representatives. After John Alexander was returned, he and along with our other friends in the Interparliamentary Union, like Joel Fitzgibbon, Trent Zimmerman, Tim Wilson, uh, Christina Keneally and a bunch of others, uh, discussed this during a luncheon and decided that the most important step that we needed to take was going to be predicated by our ability to get the motion onto the notice paper of the House of Representatives. There were many hurdles to get us to that point. However, the will of the parliamentarians came through on this occasion and people like Trent Zimmerman and Joel Fitzgibbon managed to get this debate onto the notice paper. Once this motion was on the notice paper, other forces came to play. It is true that this motion did recognise Australia's first major humanitarian relief effort. However, it also characterised the events of 1915 as the Armenian Genocide. This was unacceptable to certain others. While representatives of a foreign government lobbied through the hallways of Parliament frantically trying to sell their revisionist brand of history, we met with our friends in Parliament and explained to them the gospel of truth and justice. Thankfully, friends like Trent Zimmerman, Joel Fitzgibbon, John Alexander and many others stood by us and made sure that any attempts to remove this motion from the notice paper of the Parliament of Australia by a foreign government would be defeated. Once we entered Parliament, there was only one way to describe it. Frantic. Haig was on the phone commenting on MP speeches. Members of the board had called all six MPs officers, the clergy, the Assyrian Universal Alliance and over 20 members of the Armenian Australian community were present. It had hit 10am and we were ready to enter the chamber. We knew that we were a group that was going to be part of this motion where history was going to be made. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I move the motion relating to Australia's relief efforts following the Armenian Genocide and the terms in which it appears on the notice paper. The Member for North Sydney. Madam Deputy Speaker, on the eve of Anzac Day, our own day of national commemoration, millions of people around the world, including in Australia, come together for a different purpose. 
They paused to remember those who perished in what was one of the great crimes of the modern era, the Armenian Genocide. Three people from the government and three from the opposition were allowed to speak on the motion. It was introduced by Trent Zimmerman and seconded by Joel Fitzgibbon and John Alexander. Anne Ali, Chris Bowen and Stuart Robert also spoke on the motion. All six speakers spoke in favour of the motion which clearly articulated the words Armenian Genocide. This motion recognises those efforts which collectively represented the first major international humanitarian effort of our still relatively new nation. In so doing, they started a tradition that has typified our role in the international community. The work and efforts of those Australians who responded to the plight of the Armenian people in the years following April 25, 1915 was extraordinary. The work of those involved in the Armenian Relief Fund of Australia set an example which many have followed in the subsequent decades. And the establishment of the Australasian Orphanage must have had the collateral benefit of bolstering the reputation of the young Australian nation. It certainly forged enduring relationships between our two peoples. The Australasian Armenian Relief Fund was formed in that year and its secretary, the Reverend James Creswell, toured the Armenian refugee camps and orphanages in the following year, documenting some of the heartbreaking images of suffering among the Armenians that he saw there. Australia responded with then PM Billy Hughes allowing for free transport of relief supplies for Armenian refugees on the new Commonwealth line of steamers right up until 1929. And one Australian soldier, Tom, uh, Thomas Walter White, described the scene he witnessed. He said a number of Armenian women and children of all ages sat outside the church on bundles of clothing. They looked very sad and miserable and little wonder for their menfolk had been killed, their houses and furniture confiscated and now they were being turned into the street from their last possible sanctuary. The director of the orphanage was Captain James Knudsen, an Anzac War veteran. He was assisted by Hilda King, Secretary of the Australian Christian Students Movement, and later Mer Melbourne nurse, Miss R. Gordon, who greatly assisted with relief efforts and devoted most of their energy to the advancement of the institution. The orphanage was part of a global network of over 200 orphanages which fed and housed over 130,000 orphans. On the 25th of April 1915, Australian soldiers valiantly went ashore at Gallipoli. Unbeknownst to us, the day before, two to 300 Arminians were rounded up, uh, the beginning of what many have called a genocide of the Arminian people. It was not the first time, so tragically. Uh, that happened in events surrounding 1896. Uh, it was the second. It was, as if not, more tragic. It's right and proper that this parliament recognises these events and I congratulate the member for North Sydney and the member for Hunter for ensuring that we do so. And this great humanitarian crisis which inflicted itself upon the Armenian people and others at this time. And of course it's particularly important to recognise the humanitarian efforts of Australians and perhaps the beginning of those links of friendship and comradeship between the Australian people and Armenian people and Syrian people and all affected by these terrible, terrible events. Up to 30 countries around the world and our own New South Wales Parliament have now declared the actions of the Ottomans an act of genocide. I do not believe the ongoing failure of Australia to do so, uh, to do the same, helps rebuild trusts and relationships. Indeed, it might further inflame tensions. We invest so much in the strength of our international relationships, and yet I believe one simple act could further strengthen our place in the world. And the failure to have a debate certainly does not send the right messages. Let me say from the outset, it is clear and unequivocal that murder of Armenian nationals by the Ottoman Empire between 1915 and 1923 constituted genocide. In remembering the victims of the Armenian genocide and those Australians who came to their aid, we send a message that the events which started in 1915 are not just some footnote in history. For if we hide from the truth, if we fail to recognise the evil that was perpetrated against the Armenians, we simply provide succour to those today and in the future who think that they can deny the most important of human rights of life itself. So the House of Representatives has debated the Armenian genocide. We know our path ahead means we need to try to get the Senate to vote on it. 
Uh, but during this experience, because it took several months to get to this point, what were your highlights? Liv? I'll start. Yeah. yeah. I think the thing that I liked most was that usually when we go to Canberra, from our community, it's only us that's there. But we brought around 20 people to come. There was members of the clergy, the Armenian Relief Society, uh, Hamas guy, and all of them. We brought them there and all together, we were there to support this truly historic day. Yeah, Michael. Michael. I think for me, the whole process, uh, the parliamentary process and the motion that took place was an experience in itself. Um, after working uh, with the ANC for the last year, and to finally have a tangible and somewhat sentimental result um, in the chamber, uh, to witness it firsthand was quite amazing. Um, so that ultimately, the entire process was quite an experience. Um, what about yourself, Ike? Um, for me, it was, uh, to be honest, it was the maturing of our debate, what you said, but also I'll add to that what happened afterwards because According to many people in the media, at least The Guardian, uh, Tim Wilson was meant to be a speaker on the motion, but he was yeah. replaced by oh, yeah. the government. Yeah. And he ended up getting a slot in adjournment time, and we were fortunate enough to be dur there during that speech where you know, he, he thanked everybody for speaking for the motion, which is great, but he also said that it would have been awesome if all six of the speakers used it as an opportunity to call the genocide by its name, call the tragedy by its name, the genocide. And I think that that just showed this massive maturing of our debate. And that was definitely a major highlight for me because I think that's a new yardstick that we've set mm -hmm. now for, for the cause. We're looking forward to the next step. Yeah, can't wait. I particularly welcome this motion moved by the member for North Sydney. I also welcome the contributions in a bipartisan way from the members for Benelong and Hunter particularly who acknowledged the full extent of the genocide that occurred. There were other speakers to the motion and I don't want to dispute their motivations or intent. We welcome their empathy. But we also must acknowledge that a word was missing from their remarks. They rightly spoke of a humanitarian tragedy befalling the Armenian people. And they are right, there was a human tragedy. And others spoke of the need for Armenians to be rescued but didn't perfectly articulate, or properly articulate, from what. They spoke of events 100 years ago befalling the Armenian people, the loss of life, the marches through the desert, and the need for relief funds to support people in dire and desperate need, but did not dare to speak the tragedy's name. Genocide. 